I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Of all the skills to learn as a saltwater tank hobbyist, one of the most important is the skill and discipline of testing your tank. When you test your tank regularly and you know how to test properly, you've laid the groundwork for learning how to listen to your tank. You'll also catch any problems before they get out of hand or before they even pop up. You're also going to set yourself up for making the transition to saltwater tanks with corals called reef tanks. Now, testing doesn't have to be difficult and it doesn't have to take a lot of time because as a newbie, especially as a newbie with the budget build, you don't need to run a lot of tests on your tank. I designed the budget saltwater tank to make getting into the saltwater tank hobby easier and I designed this video series to help you have success faster. Part of having that faster success is showing you what's actually worth focusing on. See, there's lots of test kits that test lots of different things. And for the budget build, once you've cycled your tank or two days after you've added new fish to the tank, this is all that you need to test for. Nitrates, phosphates, salinity. That's it. Keep it simple and just test for these things. Ammonia nitrite only need to be tested for while you're cycling your tank or for two days after you add new fish. Why the two day after you add new fish rule? Adding more fish to your tank increases the amount of fish waste and food in the tank. These things are called bio load. Now nitrifying bacteria processes that bio load. When you increase the bio load, your nitrifying bacteria has to work harder. To make sure your nitrifying bacteria is keeping up, you check ammonia and nitrite levels. If ammonia or nitrite get above 0.25 parts per million, then you need to do a water change to bring things back in check. Now, if you follow my advice about slowly stocking your tank and using nitrifying bacteria to cycle your tank, you shouldn't see ammonia or a nitrite spike. Even though you shouldn't see a spike, it's good to be in the know in case a problem arises. There are lots of test kits on the market and I've used nearly all of them. Now to make things easier on you, I've compiled my recommended test kit list for newbies all the way to full-blown reef junkies. To download my recommended test kit list, just follow the link right up there. Now if you're a newbie with the budget build, here are the test kits that I recommend for you. For ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and phosphate, use the Salifert kits. Salinity is checked with a refractometer that came in your budget build kit. If you want a nice upgrade to your testing equipment that you'll use on the budget build and all your future saltwater tanks, grab the Hanna Salinity Tester and the Hanna Phosphate Checker. Both of these pieces of equipment are easy to use and make your testing easier and more accurate. Now that you know what to test for and what test kits to use, how often should you test your tank? The answer, twice a week. Twice a week, run your test and here's the important step. Write the results down. Testing your tank and writing down the results is an important step in learning how to listen to your tank. I like to write down what I see. Fish all eating, fish looking happy, a little bit of algae outbreak. Whatever it is that you see in your tank, write it down next to your test results. Once you have these results written down, you can refer to them and it'll help you spot trends in your tank. Now, how you test is just as important as testing itself, so here's some tips to make your testing more accurate. First, check the expiration date of your test kit. An expired test kit should be thrown out and replaced with a fresh kit. Second, test at the same time of day when you test. Whether it be in the morning or at night, or even when your tank lights are off, test at the same time when you test. Also, testing immediately right after feeding isn't recommended. Pro tip. Most test kits require you to compare a color in a test file versus a color on a color card. Therefore, it's important to always do this comparison in the same light. For example, on the budget build, whenever I run a water test, I always compare it right here in front of the tank. If I took this same test file and compared the colors here under this lighting and went out into the warehouse where the lighting is totally different, the colors in the test file can look much different, which is going to throw off my testing results. Therefore, whenever you do this comparison, always do it in the same light. Once you're done with your test, rinse your test files with at least filtered water, ideally RODI water. Tap water can leave a residue or stain your testing equipment, which can throw off your results. The last piece of advice to make your testing more accurate is to use better testing gear. The Hanna Salinity Tester simply gives you a number for your salinity, and the Phosphate Checker doesn't require you to compare colors. If you're not willing to test your tank's water, at least let someone do it for you. You can do that with a water testing service. For example, the AWT kit, all you have to do is purchase a kit from saltwateraquarium.com, go online and fill out a profile, take a sample of your tank's water, put it in the prepaid envelope, and then send it off. A couple days later, you get an email with your test results. That's better than not testing at all. But learning how to test your tank, testing regularly, and writing down the results are all important steps in learning how to listen to your tank. 
once you learn how to listen to your tank, you're going to be a better saltwater aquarium hobbyist. So take the five minutes, or send off your water sample, and test your tank's water. Once you're done testing, kick back and enjoy your fish. What's up, guys? 